Okay, so this is just going to be a fun lesson and you probably won't need to know these in 99.99% of your Korean conversations. Um, but what gave me the idea to make a video like this first was when I learned a few years ago the counter son. Son means hand. And um, this is actually a counter that can be used for counting fish, specifically mackerel. So this is the counter for counting two mackerel. Uh, the way that they're sold at the market will be one kind of larger mackerel and one smaller one. So they'll be tied together and you'll call that han son, literally one hand, but it's used as a counter. So I learned that and I thought, wow, that's uh, that's the most useless counter I've ever heard. I wonder what other useless count, I mean, uh, fun and in uh, useful cool counters that we can learn today. So I've assembled a list of some of the most useless, useful counters in Korean. But before I start, I want to say that if you would like to see more videos like this, um, if you enjoy this, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Um, and let's get started. So this is the first one I wanted to explain, but the next one is Pan, meaning plank. Now you might be familiar with the counter pan used for counting pizzas, but Pan can also be used for counting 30 eggs. And the way these are sold, still today you can find them, is a big egg container that sells uh, six by five eggs, so 30 eggs. So if you wanna buy one of those things that has eggs on them in Korea, that's called a pan. And all of the counters that we're gonna be using today, I should make this clear, use pure Korean numbers. So you would count this with han pan, tu pan, like that. But there's something else you can also do when you're using this counter pun. Uh, people sometimes use it jokingly when talking about someone who is 30 years old. For example, you could um, tease one of your close friends when they turn 30. You can say, 너도 이제 계란 한 판이네. You are now also uh, one 30 pack of eggs. So just a way to kind of tease someone about being 30 years old by comparing them to um, eggs. The next counter we're gonna learn also has to do with eggs, and that is chur. Now, chur is a regular word that means a line of something. And if you say chur, if you use it as a counter, it's used for counting 10 eggs. That's because when you buy eggs at some outdoor markets, you can find them as a bundle of eggs in one line. So anything that's sold in a line is counted with chur. But it can also include kimbap. So when you buy kimbap, it's also sold in a line. So you would order how many kimbap you want, how many lines of kimbap you want, hanjur, tujur, like that. There is another counter, pan, actually used for counting a game or a match. So how many rounds of a game did you play? Like if you wanted to go uh, do three rounds of StarCraft, you would count those with pan. So se pan, three rounds or three games or matches. The next counter I wanna share is tong. And this one is used for counting communication. So emails, telephone calls, letters, um, in the olden days, telegraphs. It can also be used for counting anything that is cylindrical. So uh, toilet paper rolls. And funnily enough, it's also used for counting watermelons. For example, if you wanna say that you didn't even get one phone call or one letter or email, uh, you can use this counter. So you could say, so literally, not even one tong of a telephone call. Not even one telephone call. So I didn't even get one phone call. Now we're getting into the um, less commonly used counters, even more so. And uh, there are actually two, and that is me or sang. And these are the counters that you can use for chopsticks. Me has a bit of an old formal feeling to it. Um, you can use either of these though. So you could say chokarak tu me chuseyo or sang instead. Try asking for a couple pairs of chopsticks like this the next time you go to a restaurant and uh, watch your server scratch their heads at why you would know such a useless counter. Anyway, uh, let's go to the next one. The next one is te. And now this one actually isn't so useless. Um, it's, it's still used all of the time. I just think it's a lesser known one. And this is used for counting houses or strangely um, blankets. 
However, using it for counting blankets is a little bit less common nowadays. Um, more often you'll just hear people use tang, which is used for counting like sheets of paper or things like that, t-shirts. Um, but it can also be used for blankets as well. So te. There's another counter te though, which is also used for counting. Um, this is why I included in here. 750 grams of ginseng. And I know you're probably thinking, well, that's random. Yeah, the, the reason for that is a, a story for another day. But if you're buying ginseng bundled at a traditional Chinese medicine marketplace, you would purchase them in te. So you would count those in han te, tu te, like that. And uh, however much ginseng your heart desires, count it with che. The next one we have is top. Now you probably won't need to buy anything in a top. That's because it's used for counting a hundred fruit or vegetables. So that would be, uh, for example, it's most commonly used with cabbages, radish, and garlic. Now I could imagine buying a hundred things of garlic um, if I was gonna do like a lot, like if maybe if I worked at a restaurant, you'd wanna buy a lot of garlic for cooking. Otherwise, this is not something that the average person is going to ever need. But people do know this word and uh, you might maybe overhear someone else ordering a hundred of something. The next one we have, <laughs> these are so useless. The next word we have is tor. Um, this one is used for counting chestnuts. Yes, chestnuts. So if you wanted to buy uh, roasted chestnuts on the side of the street from one of those uh, vendors, well, you can order them individually using the counter tor. Palm is a chestnut. So palm han tor chuseo. <laughs> Give me one chestnut, just one. You probably could use this one if you really tried to. The next one we have is kan, which is used for any sort of uh, box, or it's also used for blank spaces on tests. So just any sort of box that you could write something in or just a blank box. And it's also used for counting individual sheets of toilet paper. So the next time you're in the bathroom and uh, you run out of toilet paper, you can you know knock on the stall next to you and say, uh, <laughs> Uh, 저기요, uh, 휴지 세 칸만 주세요. Please just, just give me three, three squares of toilet paper. Yeah, um, you know that this could be, this could turn out to be the most useful of all of these counters that we're doing today. Next, I have a few more quick ones. Pai is used for anything that is fired. So that would be bullets or arrows. And if you're reading something about war in Korean, you'll probably come across this word. Uh, other common counters, well, mm, they're uncommon and unusual, but maybe you wanna know them. Pier is used for uncut fabric rolls. So if you go to a fabric store and they have those big rolls of uncut fabric, that would be counted with pier. As well as if you're buying a pack of sewing needles, you can call it a sum. You can count it with sum. That is 24 sewing needles specifically. So if you're interested in sewing really as a hobby and you're also going to go to a Korean fabric store, then you might want to learn these. Otherwise, you'll probably never need them. But there is another counter peer, which is different than this one, and that's used for counting large animals, specifically cows and horses. Now, you probably will never hear this one. Uh, the reason is nowadays people just use mari almost all of the time. So, um, but it's possible maybe you're reading a textbook about um, farming or something, and uh, this word comes up for counting cows or horses. I wouldn't recommend using it though, just stick to mari. Now we have a few more and we're going into the more obscure counters. Uh, first is chuk, which is used for counting 20 squid. And uh, this is just how they're sold uh, bundled together at a market. So if you're really hungry and you wanna buy a bunch of squid for cooking, well, you can ask for several uh, chuk. Next though is turum, and this is used for 20 fish. Now these are not large fish, these are going to be the smaller fish. So this would be like a corbina fish or a croaker, and uh, you would get two rows of 10 that are bundled together into han turum. And next is the counter tot, which is used for counting 100 sheets of dried 
kim. So, you know, the seaweed used for making kimbap and that sort of stuff. Um, this one's understandable. I mean, if I was gonna buy kim myself at the marketplace and I was uh, cooking at my house, I'd probably get, you know, a hundred sheets of it. Um, so yeah, that's what it's used for if you want to know, but you don't need this counter. You can also just use tang, the regular counter for counting uh, sheets of like paper or any sort of thin sheet of something. Uh, but you could use this if you want to refer to a hundred of those. And next is tasu, tas, which is actually from the Japanese word tasu, comes from the English word dozen. So it means 12 of something. I've never heard this word before. Now I'm not a Korean, granted, but uh, I tried to find out what situation do Korean people use this. And the only situations I could find would be like a textbook example sentence translating the English word dozen. So Koreans know this word. If you really want to refer to a dozen, you can use tasu. So yeah, just a, an obscure one, but these are all pretty obscure. And last but not least is the counter ku, which is used for um, dead bodies or corpses. Uh, for example, you could say something like, 경찰은 시체를 내고 발견했다. So the police discovered uh, four dead bodies. This one you'll probably see if you're reading newspaper articles or watching the news, um, but otherwise you're not going to need this in your regular everyday life, and you're certainly not going to buy these when you go to the store. So anyway, um, if you enjoyed this sort of video, if you'd like to see more of this series, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you again in the next episode. 그럼 다음에 또 봐.